Thank you, Senator. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, a special recognition for uh, Senator Kittleman driving down this evening. I really appreciate that. And uh, Sheriff Evans, uh, thanks for the time. And where is it? There it is. Thanks for coming down. I appreciate you taking the time out of the day. Um, we have a real interesting crowd here tonight. We have uh, folks who voted for Barack Obama and folks who voted for John McCain. We have folks who voted for Ehrlich and folks who have voted for O'Malley. So what's bringing us all here together tonight? Change. Change. Change is right. Well, Meyer and I have some friends that uh, own a business in Leonardtown. And you know they've been struggling the last couple of years. When the 2007 special session raised business taxes by 1%, it didn't sound like a lot. It's going from 5% to 6%. They explained to me that that's a 20% increase on the business taxes, and it came straight out of the bottom line. Well, 20% of six employees is one lost job. And that was a major part of a household's income, and another one of our neighbors is out of work. Unfortunately, it didn't end there. These entrepreneurs struggled, but after all the regulation and all the taxation, there wasn't enough profit. They closed the shop and everyone lost their job. I met another fellow who owns an excavating business. And I bought it from his father who founded it here in 1963. And at one point in time, he had over 20 employees, but no longer. He's down to three employees, including himself. He sees things beginning to change, and he thinks there, there might be a need to hire another fellow. But he's on the fence. He's literally afraid of what Washington and Annapolis might dump on him soon. Healthcare is still out there, it's not resolved. The government that's supposed to represent him has become a boogeyman that is paralyzing him. Now, tonight when you go home, I want you to look at your state income tax return. That's your state return, pull it out. You probably paid $5,000 in state income tax. And I'll bet $500 of your property tax went to Annapolis. That came out of your paycheck every month. When you spent the rest of that paycheck, you probably paid $3,000 in state sales taxes. And you probably paid $500 or more in state gas tax. That came out of your wallet, and it doubled your tax bill. If you refinanced or bought a home, you paid those new higher recordation and transfer taxes. You paid that with a checkbook. So you probably paid $10,000 and sent that up to Annapolis. And, and the business owners in here know that that doesn't even talk about the corporate income taxes, the unemployment taxes, and the commercial property taxes that they have to pay. Yet, we have another looming budget crisis. So O'Malley's got to find now $3 billion to close the structural deficit. Uh, I'm sorry, now it's a cyclical deficit. But don't kid yourself. He's got to get that from 2 million Maryland households. So that means it's going to be more than $1,000 per family. Now, Annapolis doesn't know how to cut spending, but they know how to raise a tax. And they're going to get it from our paychecks, from our wallets, and from our checkbooks. Now, we know what has to be done. We know we're have to, we have to grow jobs. We know we have to grow our community. That thing is just creaky as the Dickens. <laughs> I'll stay over here when I'm not so scared. <laughs> In order to grow jobs, we know that we have to ignite small businesses. We know that we are going to have to pay attention to critical job markets. To grow our community, we know we have to fix transportation. We have to make public safety a top priority, and we have to enhance our educational system. To get the budget under control, we know the first thing we have to do is to roll back those job-killing tax hikes from the 2007 special session. We're going to have to return to lower spending, and we're going to have to make government accountable. <clears throat> Programs that don't work must end. 